Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Joe back here with another video. So I just got back from uh, family vacation, which um, you can see that video that I posted uh, a couple weeks ago on YouTube about camera choices and about what I was gonna take. Kind of broke my own rules just a little bit and I didn't take everything that I thought I was gonna take. So I brought the uh, Fujifilm X-T3 uh, with the 18 millimeter F2, which I used a lot especially because there was some you know pretty nice scenery um, one of those photos I'll throw up here uh, on the screen and I also brought the um, 35 millimeter 1.4 for some closer work and some portrait work and things like that um, in addition to those uh, cameras that I brought I brought the uh, DJI Osmo pocket which I didn't use at all I kind of brought that because I thought I was gonna do some like you know, motion lapses and things of that sort up on the deck on the boat. But, you know, it was such a, an action packed uh, vacation, uh, a lot of fun with my family that really, um, I just wanted to disconnect a lot and I didn't want to sit there and be tied down to a camera. I hardly even used my Fuji. Um, I shot a lot of video. I shot a lot of video on this vacation. So we'll see how that turns out. But that leads me to my next thing. I said I was going to bring the Sony RX100 uh, Mark V, uh, that didn't even come with me um, because predominantly I was around water and sand and beach and you know it's just not weather resistant and uh, it just didn't lend itself to uh, the task at hand. Um, so what did I bring? Uh, what did I use the most? And I used the Osmo Action. Um, so I used the Osmo Action on this floaty grip a lot when I was uh, on the cruise, uh, but before that, when I was in Disney, I used it on a uh, smaller uh, tripod, uh, which I'll get into in a minute. But the reason for making this video is, you know, this is the first time I really uh, put this thing through the paces. This camera has a lot of great things going for it, but it definitely has some shortcomings. And the shortcomings that um, it has, it, they really need to be addressed. And I think they can be addressed in a firmware update, but they definitely need to be addressed. So, uh, getting into the negative right off the bat, um, Rocksteady is amazing and it works really good. However, I noticed myself when I was doing, um, you know, like panning shots and I'm not going fast, um, real slow panning shots. I would notice that the video would be capturing and then it would somewhere stop as I keep panning the camera and then it would catch up to itself and it would do it really fast and like jittery. Uh, so now that whole panning shot is either ruined or I can only use the first couple seconds of that clip and not the rear part of it. So I found myself like, okay, let me reset it and try it again. So that was a real big problem. The other big problem, which I didn't think was going to be a big problem, is the delay. The lag with Rocksteady is atrocious, guys. DJI, please, for the love of God, or whatever religion you belong to, please update the firmware that we actually have a real time uh, stabilization here because literally it's, you know, uh, the best way I could describe it to you is I don't know in terms of seconds, but this is what I would say. The action, then on the screen. So here it is, and here it comes up on the screen. You see it, and then here it is on the screen. It's, it's bad. It's really bad and it is distracting. The other problem that I'm having with Rocksteady, and this happened to me about eight or nine times, just like the um, panning movement when I would catch it, um, that happened about eight or nine times. But what also happens is if I was doing something low where I was filming like the ground or I was filming something low like rocks and I'm doing a slow sweep up to the horizon to you know, focus on my subject, what I would get is a skewed horizon. Now, my horizon, my camera was steady and it was even. I, have a, I was using uh, the grid view on the back to make sure that I was lining up my horizons properly and I would be straight up 
and I could see that I was lined up. However, my horizon was canted and it wouldn't correct itself. So the only way it would correct itself is I would have to give the camera like a hard rock to whatever, re-establish the uh, gyro that's in here or whatnot. Um, I would have to like kind of help it along by rocking it in order for it to like, oh, okay, reset itself and get to where it needed to be. That's a huge problem because so many times I'm, I'm trying to do this shot and it's not a big deal because it's a cinematic shot and if it's an action camera shot, you know, somebody doing something, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But here I am like trying to work this nice movement and I come up and I got a skewed, uneven horizon. And what a pain in the ass that was. Uh, so, you know, it just makes your work redundant over and over again. Uh, the other issue that I have obviously is um, this in the water when any kind of water would hit the back screen it would change the settings now i don't mean like you well i can't say that when i went underwater for snorkeling and whatnot i noticed that sometimes the settings would change you know from you know let's just say i was shooting you know 4k 60 it would go to 24 or it would change to photo mode and i'm like this is crazy now i don't know if it was droplets hitting it or when the water when the camera broke the plane of the water that the water you know messed with it but it would change it so now you know, okay what's your options well you can lock the screen okay so now you lock the screen that's great but now you're in the middle of the water and you're trying to set up for like let's just say a slow motion shot you know you were filming uh you know 4k 60 and your kid's about to come down the water slide and you're like oh this would be great eight times slow motion let me change it and here you are all day long trying to access the menu but your fingers wet the only way i could get around it is i'm blowing on my finger I'm blowing on the rear screen trying to get some kind of dryness to just access it okay yeah that's the unlock it you can set up your parameters and and do it through the side button i guess that's the only way to work around but it would have been nice to have that been a little bit more tactile in the water i don't know if that's possible i don't know if that's a workaround but we'll see um what do i like about the camera the case is great um i like that you can see the lcd uh you know green button uh through the top of the case i think that's a really cool feature um you know the the stabilization is nice when walking um i did use this a lot like i said in the parks and it handled everything great uh, I really didn't have time to set up with a lot of ND filters and, and polarizers because I was kind of running and gunning and I'm not going to hold my whole family up shooting everything. So to be honest with you, I shot a lot of, ever, uh, shot a lot of the footage in uh, DJI's um, color profile. So, you know, it may not be that great grading it. I may not grade it at all. I may just shoot it. This is, was more like, you know, footage just for family memories and whatnot. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we are with that. So. We'll see how it looks, um, but it handled everything great that way. Um, I'm, you know, going back and forth with this lens design. It is really nice. Um, it does work out well. Uh, I did notice um, it did handle water droplets really well. The, it, nothing really collected on the screen. If it did, you would just have to, you know, dunk the uh, the camera into the water, and it, it would just fade right off. Um, I can tell you that in Disney, uh, if you plan on taking a trip there, um, things like this, you may be okay with a, with this little floaty grip. Um, you know, you can do something like the uh, GoPro Shorty here, but I would recommend something of this sort rather than just a straight out stick. And the only reason why I say that is for, you know, obviously this comes out and you can get some kind of reach with it. But what I would recommend is I was stopped because there are no selfie sticks allowed in Disney. Now, if somebody sees this, they may say it's a selfie stick, but you can lie to them and they get confused and they don't know what they're talking about. So what I end up doing is I just say, no, 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 it's a tripod. You know, I go, oh, you know, I just have a little tripod here and that's all it is. It, it you know, it raises up a little bit, but, uh, 
yeah, this is just a little tripod for uh, taking family photos and stuff. And they just look confused and bewildered a little bit and they leave you alone. I mean, it's not a big deal, it's a workaround. But if you do have a tripod, if you do have a selfie stick, they will stop you. So that's something to be aware of. Um, this was great on uh, Castaway K where we went. Uh, you know, I was uh, snorkeling and whatnot. However, on most water slides, now I don't know if this is the same on every cruise line or every water park, they will not allow you to have a floaty, which doesn't make any sense to me. You can have a head rig, you can have a chest or a wrist. Um, certain places will allow you to just carry the uh, camera like this. So I kind of went down the water slide on one of them, just gripping it tight like this and went down. Um, some places won't even allow you to have this and they won't allow you to carry the camera. It has to be mounted like on the ship. The ship wanted you to have this mounted. So just something to be aware of um, if that's uh, something that you're gonna you know, encounter on your vacation is you might wanna just check and see what the rule's gonna be for you know, running something like this. Um, what does this need to be better? Um, is it a GoPro killer? I don't know. I'm filming on a GoPro 7 right now, so we'll see. Uh, this one will start going through its testing. Um, I can see some true advantages of the GoPro. Uh, live streaming is nice. Uh, this will not live stream. Uh, both of them have portrait mode. Uh, you know, some of the viewing, uh, I think the viewing might be a little flatter uh, on the uh, Osmo action. However, um, one thing to note is that D-Warp, uh, now when I talk about a flat screen, um, you know, the, the GoPro tends to, you know, give you that bulbous look. Um, D-Warp would constantly sh shut off on this. Uh, I would uh, change parameters, not all the time, but enough to mention it to you that constantly I would have to check and make sure that D-Warp was off. Obviously, if you shoot photos, your JPEG will show D-Warp. If you have it activated, the raw photo will not. The raw photo will need to be corrected in post, and that can be a pain in the butt. So, something to notice. Um, but, you know, also, I saw, I didn't see one person with this thing. Everybody, uh, GoPros must be huge in Disney. They're definitely huge on the boat. I saw every dad under the sun rocking a GoPro. A lot of them had microphones on there. It made me kind of miss the fact that I didn't have a mic. All I had was an onboard um, you know, mic through the camera. Now that's fine for water work, but when I was walking around the Disney, all the noise, all the ambient sounds, it would have been nice to have a little wireless mic. So now I'm filming this right now with the, D, uh, the uh, Osmo, I'm sorry, the GoPro 7, and I'm running my little Rode wireless Go mic on the top through the adapter and on my shirt here. I'm just using a uh, small rig cage and I'm actually using, uh, I don't have any ND filters for the uh, GoPro 7, so I'm using, uh, the Polar Pro um, six to nine stop variable end day. This thing's like 200 and I don't even know, close to $300. So um, expensive, not the best option to obviously use with the GoPro, but it is what I have and I make do. Um, the other nice thing is obviously the batteries. I have a GoPro 5 as well. All the batteries transfer over, so everything's the same. Um, mounts are the same on both with this and the uh, the GoPro series, so that is uh, great. But like I said, my main issue, uh, you know, the front screen. Now, you know, the front screen, a lot of people say, well, maybe it's delaying, Rocksteady's delaying because you're using a front screen. It delays horribly front and back screen. Really doesn't make a difference what screen you're using. So throw that idea away. The front screen, although nice, uh, for framing up photos and whatnot is pretty cool. But I found myself, um, even when I was vlogging with it, uh, I mean, these things are wide enough that if you're pointing it at your face, you know, if you point this thing at your face, you're gonna be in the frame. So I, I didn't really catch myself um, using it too much. Um, 
I don't think it's a novelty. I think it's a great idea. I would love to see GoPro go and actually go that route. But um, yeah, it wasn't something that I really used too much. Um, you know, I, I do think that um, both the GoPro app and the Osmo Action app work just fine. I do like the layout of the Osmo Action DJI app a little bit better than I do on the, Go, than the GoPro app. And hear me out. Uh, they both connect just fine, very quick. They're very quick to, uh, you know, uh, show you your videos and your, your media footage and you can download and, and you know, transcode the, the footage and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing that I did like about the uh, DJI app is all your parameters are right there on the screen. You can access your shutter speed, your EV comp, your ISO, um, any kind of uh, you know fo uh, linear modes and, and framing. You also can do um, zebra, and you can also have a histogram. Um, come on, GoPro, you guys have been getting in the game for a long time. You know your app is great, but it's very basic. If I want to change the shutter speed, I got to go into the parameters, exit the screen. I can't see a real live. Um, view of my shutter speed as I change it. I have to check the shutter speed, then exit out of the, the settings and then see how it looks. It's just, it's just basic. There's no reason why you guys can't step that app up and at least uh, allow some real filmmaker uh, tools. Let's fake it, face it guys, the, these cameras are being used every day for every type of work now. Vlogs, uh, documentary footage, uh, travel logs, everything under the sun and just to give you a basic app where you can't really access items really quick on the go you know it kind of stinks um, there is a lag in your app as well um, there isn't too much of a lag on DJI's app however there is a lag with their footage straight out of camera and I will applaud GoPro for uh, the fact that there is no lag um, when it comes to uh, their you know hyper smooth with, uh, you know, their onboard camera, but their app has an a, a lag, about a one, one and a half second lag. So that can be a little bit annoying. But like I said, I would just like to see more filmmaker tools on the dashboard of the um, GoPro app, uh, as opposed to DJI, which uh, they nailed it. I mean, it's great. Everything's right there. It's a touch of a button and it's live view and you can see it as you make the changes. And whatever that was with the gyro, I was looking like if I could recalibrate it somehow. Um, you know, I tried resetting the camera and, and all this and it would still do it. It, that's not good, dude. That's not good at all, guys. That has to be taken care of. I don't know if other people are suffering from this or not. I haven't hurt anybody. I don't think I have a lemon because I've been using this camera for quite some time, but that needs to be addressed. This this whole idea of you know the uh, me having to rock the camera is just it's no good. All right, guys, just a quick one, a uh, little update. Um, I don't know that I will post any of the footage I shot on vacation. Maybe some you know I'm uh, I'm not going to post my whole family vacation uh, online, but maybe some cool like you know footage, uh, slow motion work and things like that that I did just to get some uh, ideas. But thanks for checking in and. Uh, that was just uh, my, you know, crash opinion on uh, using the Osmo Action um, immensely on vacation. All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.